breaking this morning about a crash that killed one football player, sent another NFL player to jail. Dallas Cowboys player Josh Brent allegedly wrecked his car while driving drunk on Saturday. We now know he pleaded guilty to a DUI charge back in 2009, received a 60-day sentence then, a fine and community service. Now, Jerry Brown, a former member of the Jacksonville Sharks, was killed in that crash. He had just been activated to the team off the practice squad. Now, Brown's mother says she forgives Brent, and he has been invited to a service that the family is holding as well. Now Josh Brent could face 20 years in prison if uh, convicted. I'm joined this morning by sports agent and attorney John Phillips, and uh, we're seeing more and more of this. I know Javon Belcher with the, uh, with the, uh, with the Chiefs after uh, killing his uh, girlfriend and then killing himself. Uh, what, what's going on with all these rash of uh, bad behavior, I guess you could say? It's an epidemic. You know, there's, there's been over, I think USA Today reported over 640 arrests since since 2000. It's about 50, 60 a year. It spiked this year for whatever reason. We're up 8 to 10. You know, we were just, every month it seems like we're talking about some other DUI or some other tragic incident in the NFL. With gun ownership, 75 to 80 percent, according to coaches and people in the know, own guns. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, above the national high. And this isn't something that's new. I remember uh, Plasco Burris uh, served some jail time, actually, for having a gun discharge. Um, what is it with the access to these? What is it with the education? And how do they improve these things? Let's at least talk about gun control within the NFL. Right. It's Bob Costas has taken it on, which has been interesting to see. You know, it's the issue is it's a part of the culture. You know, the, here's guys that come into money and then all of a sudden they think they need to have guns on their person to be able to protect them. And it's, you've seen that in society. Obviously, I've been involved with, you know, the Jordan Davis case. and Everybody's arming up in America and, and everybody's fearful. And the NFL, it seems like because they have new money, they're even more fearful. And it's, it, it's just a bad mix, especially when you get alcohol involved or you get you know, some, some instability from the CTE, the concussions and all of that, that the brain doesn't rationalize things so well. It's, it's a mixture of a deadly cocktail. Uh, let's talk about Josh Brown. What is he facing right now? Is he going to be going away to, to jail for a while? I mean, he's got a previous conviction. Right. Second DUI, it doesn't look good. To, I, don't, I don't know Texas's repeat offender law. I kind of looked at it a little bit because Blackman's first DUI was there, um, although it wasn't a DUI, it was dropped down. Um, it, but it's they're pretty stiff. Yeah. Um, real briefly, I know you're, you're representing the Jordan Davis family. How are they doing right now? And what's the latest on what's going on there? I said yesterday that I find strength from somebody's strength that's enduring more than me. You wouldn't believe this family's strength through this. It's, it's a tragedy, and, and they're getting through it day by day. They, you know, unexpected murder of their son. But, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's day by day, and sometimes Ron says minute by minute. All right. So. Thanks for coming in, uh, John Phillips, uh, sports agent and attorney as well locally. We appreciate you sharing some of your thoughts. Uh, 710 right now. For more information on these stories as well, you can always go back and review them on actionnewsjacks.com.